This is Andy Osbaugh from Duke University School of Medicine. In this presentation, we will discuss a distinct group of fungal infections due to the endemic or dimorphic fungi. Now, within the fungal kingdom, the dimorphic fungi represent a fascinating, very distinct group of organisms with some similar biological and clinical features. So in this presentation, we will first define what are distinct biological features of these organisms specifically defining the words endemic and thermally dimorphic in relation to these organisms. Secondly, we will discuss cl common clinical manifestations of infections due to these fungi. And lastly, we will think about ways to diagnose and to treat these fungal infections. I'm going to begin this with a case of a 48-year-old man whom I cared for who was originally from North Carolina, but who had moved to Southern California for college. Now, during college, he developed a prolonged febrile respiratory infection, and the college student health service told him that he had a condition known as valley fever. Since his infection resolved without uh, treatment, uh, he thought little of this for the next few decades until he began to develop a chronic cough, a bit of shortness of breath, and bloody sputum. And on chest x-ray, as seen in the right-hand uh, uh, panel of this slide, there was an infiltrate in the left upper lung concerning for chronic pneumonia. So the question about this case is what is valley fever and how is it related to the patient's current symptoms so many years after his first infection? So valley fever is a part of the disease known as coccidioidal mycosis. This is a fungal infection caused by two related species, coccidioides emetus and coccidioides posidaceae. Now these fungi are endemic in certain regions of the country. And that word means that they are particularly found in distinct geographical regions. And for coccidioides species, the regions of endemicity are in the arid and desert regions of the uh, US Southwest and of Northern Mexico. Again, these organisms uh, are primary pathogens of humans and other mammals. So in contrast to organisms such as Aspergillus, uh, that are uh, also environmental fungi, uh, the endemic fungi uh, can actually cause symptomatic infections in immunocompetent hosts. Many of these endemic fungi enter the human body through the lungs where they cause a self-limited primary infection, but they do have the potential to cause uh, more serious disease and especially for chronic infections. Now the word thermally dimorphic refers to the fact that these fungi grow two different forms depending on the temperature of incubation. So in the environment at lower temperatures, they grow in uh, a hyphal form, and in the human body, they tend to grow in a round yeast-like form, and we will discuss the specifics for each fungus that we discuss. So for coccidioides infections, the primary infection is known as valley fever. Again, this includes a, a self-limited syndrome characterized by respiratory symptoms, uh, sometimes some low-grade fever that can last for a few weeks or up to a few months, and it is very nonspecific, and most patients do not seek medical care for this infection unless it becomes quite serious. Now, this primary infection, uh, either immediately or years later, can develop into a chronic infection, and for coccidioides infections, uh, uh, these primarily occur um, in the lungs causing a chronic pneumonia. However, skin infections and joint infections can also occur. One of the most serious complications of the chronic form of coccidioide mycosis is involvement in the central nervous system, causing a chronic meningitis, characterized often by headache and maybe focal neurological symptoms. Now, on lumbar puncture, one of the distinctive features of coccidioides meningitis is that there will be an excessive number of eosinophils um, in the spinal fluid, uh, one of the few forms of an eosinophilic meningitis. Now, interestingly, there are certain ethnic groups that are, are at an increased risk of developing the complications of chronic infections. Uh, the reasons why are not known, but patients from Southeast Asia, the Philippines, or patients from African descent have a much increased risk of chronic infections uh, due to coccidioides compared to other populations. Also, patients who have T-cell dysfunctions, 
especially patients with late stage AIDS or uh, transplant patients being treated with immunosuppression are also at a highly increased risk of the chronic manifestations of coccidioidal mycosis. Now, in terms of the mycological features, the tissue or the parasitic form of, of coccidioides species is known as the spherule. And in the far right uh, panel of the slide, you can see this round fungal form uh, filled with smaller individual fungal cells known as endospores. The large form, called the spherule, is the characteristic histological feature that defines coccidioidomycosis. Again, not seen in the human, but growing in the environment will be the hyphal form, as demonstrated in the left lower panel of the slide, where the hyphae can be seen breaking down into the individual infectious cells known as arthrokinidia. So let's review the patient case to see what forms of his infection were actually common uh, to uh, uh, other people with this infection. Again, he moved from a region of uh, non-endemicity into a region where coccidioides is found very frequently in Southern California, uh, where he developed the primary infection known as valley fever, this self-limited but reasonably prolonged respiratory fever syndrome. Uh, again, not immediately, but many years later, developed a chronic infection. And in his case, he had the manifestation of a chronic pneumonia, uh, as demonstrated in the chest x-ray. He did not have the skin manifestations. Um, importantly, central nervous system infection was ruled out by lumbar puncture in this patient. He did not have uh, the arthritis uh, forms of the infection. However, importantly, he, he is uh, African-American, one of the ethnic groups that is at a higher risk for the chronic manifestations of this infection. On biopsy of his lungs, the spherule forms, the tissue forms uh, was noted, and the infectious arthrokinidia um, were the way that the patient was uh, initially exposed by a respiratory inoculation. Now, a distinct uh, endemic fungal infection is histoplasmosis, caused by the fungus Histoplasma capsulatum. The region of endemicity for Histoplasma capsulatum is demonstrated on the map on this slide, and it primarily involves the central Midwestern states along the Mississippi and Ohio River valleys. Now, this map was generated um, in, by a study in the uh, U.S. Navy, where skin test uh, for delayed hypersensitivity reactions to histoplasma antigens was formed in a large number of uh, naval recruits over 50 years ago. Now this would be similar to performing a tuberculosis skin test to look for prior exposure to tuberculosis. And those naval recruits were mapped by their county of birth and the skin test um, results were overlaid over this data, demonstrating that patients who grew up in these regions were at a higher risk of uh, prior exposure to this fungus. Now this map could be superimposed over a similar map of environmental sampling uh, in uh, the different counties too, looking for the, the fungus could be isolated. Again, similar to other thermally dimorphic fungi, uh, histoplasma species grow as molds in the environment and in a round yeast-like form in the human body. They are primary pathogens causing that initial primary respiratory infection that is often self-limited, but the potential for chronic infection. Now, similar to coccidioides primary infection, uh, people in the Midwest who are exposed to histoplasma species often have a self-limited uh, respiratory uh, infection characterized by a uh, cough and um, perhaps some fever. The chronic infection, however, is distinct in that uh, the lung is the primary site of, of uh, chronicity and reactivation. Clinically, it uh, very similarly mimics chronic tuberculosis. Uh, patients uh, living in, in this region of the world often have calcified granulomas demonstrating old healed pulmonary histoplasmosis and reactivation infections in this organ can occur. Now interestingly, similar to tuberculosis as well, histoplasma species live within macrophages and other histiocytes in the body where they can live for years uh, without um, reactivation. However, uh, once reactivated, they can cause disseminated infections, and they do so particularly in patients who have T-cell dysfunction, such as those with late-stage AIDS. And in recent years, um, disseminated histoplasmosis is often seen in patients who were treated with anti-tumor necrosis alpha uh, therapy for autoimmune diseases. 
The tissue or parasitic form uh, is a small individual budding yeast-like cell as opposed to the grouped cells in the spherules of coccidioidomycosis. And again, this organism grows in the saprophytic form in hyphae. The third endemic fungal infection is blastomycosis caused by the fungus Blastomyces dermatitidis. Now the region of in highest endemicity is somewhat overlapping with that of histoplasmosis. However, the region is in the map is shifted a bit further north, encompassing the areas around the Great Lakes region and southern Canada. Again, as a thermally dimorphic fun fungus, uh, this organism grows in the environment as a mold and in a round form in the patients. And again, similar to these other infections, has a primary respiratory site of inoculation uh, where it causes the first infection with the potential for chronicity. Specific for blastomycosis, uh, many of the chronic manifestations of uh, this infection uh, are uh, dermatologic, as can be seen by this uh, chronic skin lesion in a Canadian farmer. Blastomycosis also uh, tends to recur uh, in the bone um, as well as in the male genital urinary tract. The specific fungal form that is seen in the tissue is a larger yeast cell that has very broad bases where it buds from the mother cell, forming these broad-based budding yeast cells, and again, forming hyphae in the environment at lower temperature. A very distinct fungal infection, not seen in the United States, but seen in uh, Central America and in South America is pericoxidioidomycosis, caused by the fungus Pericoxidioides brasiliensis. There is a significant uh, increase in incidence in males, with uh, males being more than 15 times more likely than females to be infected, perhaps related uh, to uh, cultural differences and uh, exposure and who actually works uh, the land in, in, in these uh, cultures. Uh, they can also form uh, very disfiguring skin and mucosal lesions, and when biopsied, uh, the fungus forms this very characteristic uh, round form that is often no noted as a captain's wheel or a ship's steering wheel of uh, 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 fungal form. Now, a very unique uh, infection due to a thermally dimorphic primary pathogen is that of sporotrichosis caused by Sporothrix schenkii. Now, it is distinct from some of the other thermally dimorphic fungi for uh, a couple of reasons. First, uh, it doesn't have a strict region of endemicity. It is found uh, much more diffusely throughout the world. It is often highly associated with decaying vegetation, and in contrast to the other uh, thermally dimorphic fungi, the most common route of inoculation is through the skin and not through the lungs. So you can imagine uh, that people develop uh, infections uh, by digging in the dirt or doing gardening or other um, soil activities and then developing uh, primary skin infections. The other distinctive form of this infection is the way that it spreads. Now again, uh, uh, initiating the infection at a distal site, perhaps in the hand or the foot, the infection spreads up the lymphatics causing a nodular lymphangitis and this form of spread is so characteristic for this infection that it is called a sporotrichoid pattern of spread of infection. Now, sporothrix is not the only infection uh, that can spread in this manner. Atypical mycobacteria or nocardia can also spread like this, but it is very characteristic for sporotrichosis. Once these infections are uh, considered, how are they diagnosed? Well, obviously, uh, if the infected tissue is biopsied, the organisms can either be seen by histopathology or perhaps cultured from the tissue. Uh, and the round yeast-like form will be seen uh, since uh, the tissue will be at 37 degrees. Now, for especially for histoplasma capsulatum, there is an excellent test uh, that can be performed in the serum, the urine, or other body fluids looking for specific fungal antigens. It is known as the histoplasma antigen. Uh, test and uh, it will be able to diagnose um, active infections. For the other uh, uh, fungal species, the antigen tests are not quite uh, so well worked out, but for coccidioides in particular, um, uh, serological testing uh, is employed so one can detect IgM and IgG antibodies against uh, coccidioides species 
Uh, these antibodies will rise a few weeks after initial infection and will be present as long as there's active infection uh, and will decrease after treatment or spontaneous uh, resolution of coccidioidea mycosis. Once the diagnosis is made, uh, specific an antifungal therapy is often required. Now, historically, amphotericin B has been used uh, for these infections, and it's still used for very serious forms of the infection. However, for many patients with uh, uh, endemic fungal infections, uh, the expanded azoles are the primary agents, um, such as foriconazole or posiconazole, and to a lesser extent, um, itraconazole. Now, the agent fluconazole can be used, uh, especially for coccidioides infections, chronic infections in the lungs, and also for central nervous system coccidioidomycosis because of its outstanding uh, CSF penetration. Often these patients with central nervous system uh, coccidioides infections will require lifelong therapy. So in summary, these uh, fungi um, are present in endemic regions of the country, coccidioides most likely to be found in the desert southwest of the United States and surrounding regions. Histoplasma found in the central Midwest, uh, centralized around the Ohio and Mississippi River Valleys, and Blastomyces species found in the upper Midwest around the Great Lakes regions. However, uh, they, uh, the regions of endemicity are quite uh, broad in this country. All of these fungi display the property of thermal dimorphism, growing in the yeast form and tissue, and growing in a hyphal form uh, in the environment. Again, they're all primary pathogens. They can cause symptomatic infections uh, in immunocompetent patients. They're not simply opportunists. However, most uh, immunocompetent patients can resolve the primary infection, and uh, this usually occurs through a uh, respiratory route um, of inoculation except again, as mentioned, for sporthrix, which enters the body most commonly through the skin. There are certain uh, uh, subsets of patients who will go on to develop either overwhelming initial infections or chronic infections, and uh, these must be diagnosed and treated uh, quite quickly.